All right, so we made it to Teleco. First day, we spent on loud, and today we're gonna spend a little time on Teleco. And you know, I, I can't even tell you guys how difficult it can be to practice on a lake, um, you know, three months in advance, but that's just part of it. You know, we talked a little bit about what I looked for on, uh, on Loudon, you know, we had a lot of rain, so it makes it a little more difficult too, because to know what really these areas have a lot of, like a lot of clean water, maybe these areas are muddy, muddied up a little bit. So it looks like this creek right here we're actually about to drop into is a little bit more stained. Um, so knowing where the cleaner water is when you have that rain, knowing where the stained water is can be, a, you know, a beneficial, especially in March, because you would assume March, springtime, it's gonna rain a little bit. So that's something that can you can sort of check off. And then also just looking around and just trying to, to keep an open mind. Um, you know, overall doing a little bit of research on Google Earth, you know, I could see that Teleco seems to be a little bit clearer lake. A lot of the water comes out of the mountains where on Fort Loudon, a lot of that water comes out of Douglas. So, um, which can be a little bit dirtier because the water's drawn down this time of year and whatnot. So, this is sort of just my, my general idea of what the lake's gonna be looking like. Hopefully we can look around a little bit, find a couple places that look promising. We'll do a little bit of fishing, but mostly it's gonna be a lot of idling, a lot of time looking and prepping. And I'll show you a little bit about that. Here we go. Gosh, you crazy dog. That right there's a pretty little place, a little bit of brush, a little bit of a rise, real subtle. Definitely something that I, I definitely would, would want to fish. It actually looks like crappie right here. That's a crappie hole. A few of them in it. Mm, a good crappie hole. Let's check that one out. Um, you know, obviously, like they said, the bigger things you can see right here, it's like a, a bridge pile, like obviously there's going to be a current seam there. But, but the smaller stuff that you don't see most of the time, that's the stuff that I'm looking for. Real subtle little places. You can sort of see there's a current seam right up here towards the front. So there might be a place that we would have never known. There was a little small current seam right there. So, I mean, that just understanding these places, you know, and practice being able to pull up here, pretty, probably a pretty community place. It's you know, bridge, real close, pretty obvious. Um, but definitely something you don't want to overlook. Never overlook the obvious. Because trust me, at the end of the day, always try to at least look at it. Because trust me, it can really pay dividends. And also, you have some like little rock, little stumps, little, little those irregularities. That that, you know, paying attention to that water level is going to be key. Because if the water comes up at all, water's going to have to set up on a lot of these little places that are real subtle. practice a lot of times what all do is all idle places that would never idle in official practice but I don't have much time places that just don't look that good on the map and you just get behind the steering wheel and idle and sometimes you'll find those places that you would have never found like just going on top of a flat and all of a sudden you find some random rock pile or a little drop or something that's something different and you know it's just a place like those places when those fish get there they're really special because a lot of times no one's found them, or I would term them sneaky places. That's what Connell and I and Mark have all said, sneak holes. And uh, you know, that's when, when you hear me talk about a sneak hole, I'm looking for places that, that are off the map. Obviously a sneak hole wouldn't be a place, a big giant point or anything like that. But if you say you have a big giant flat 
and you had one little place on that flat, like a rock pile, and it wasn't marked on any map, and you find that place, and the fish are there, that's a hole. That's a place where you can go to, you probably, those fish aren't very much, pre they're not pressured, because a lot of people haven't found them, and they're just so much easier to catch. So, when you hear me say that, that's what we're looking for, these places that are just different, that you wouldn't even think anything of them. Those are the sneak holes we're trying to find right now. Those are the hardest to find, but you gotta look in the, the off the wall areas to find them. So we decided to pick up old Demiki. Swap the reel handle. Cause I like reeling off my right. Big thing is a lot of times I'll, I'll get over these rock piles with the Demiki and just sort of, sit. a lot of times you can draw, if there are quite a few fish in there, you can draw them out of it. Turn my sensitivity down a little bit. I can still see what's going on. Basically, you're just you're just drifting it over the little rock pile. I try not, to, especially in shallower water. I don't normally do this at 16, but we're gonna do this for a minute, and then we're gonna probably move on pretty quick if they don't bite. You know, I, don't, I just wanted to sort of I'm trying to get an idea of what that depth zone is in this area. If there's quite a few fish, if they're not, um, you know, just to get a glimpse i mean i can't really get a really good representation on what it's going to be like but if i can just get a couple bites at least it'll allow me to know like all right you know what where, where the water's 50 degrees you know where maybe is that depth, that key depth zone that we need to be targeting because otherwise there's just so much water and so much stuff to grasp and look around on it could be a little bit overwhelming We're getting towards the afternoon, and <clears throat> I'll tell you what, we're still idling. <laughs> I seriously feel bad because I mean, I want to shoot these videos, and I want to shoot these videos and entertain you guys, but there's not a whole lot of entertainment going on in free practice. And you know, but this is what you see like right now was what I'm doing day in and day out. If I have the time to get out there and prepare, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, that's how I feel like I've gotten better. I've understood stuff a little bit more, and, and that just takes a lot of time, you know, and that's trial and error out here on the water. You know, t you always hear about that, time on the water, time on the water, time on the water, and, and Bradley wants to get in on it. But that's true. Like, now I fish a lot, but I also graph more than anything, and that's, that's the key, you know. Really, for me, it's all about being able to hit those high percentage areas and, you know, graphing those massive areas that might only have one little place in that whole area. So if you can find that one place, that's the key. And, you know, so far I've caught zero fish, zero, nada. Made about 12 casts, 13 casts. Maybe I might've fished one bank actually. I fished one bank, cranked it, threw a jerk bait a little bit, not a bite. But I'm still out here trying to find me a place. Still out here. Be out here for a little bit more, idling around, looking around, doing my thing. So, I don't really know if there's a lot of uh, good water, but I'll tell you what, I bet you a big fish lives on that stump from time to time right there. That's a, that's a condominium stump, that's a big old big stump, monster stump. Gosh, the cold current is ripping. I like it up here necessarily, the water's so fast, but I just wanted to come up here and look. A lot of rock out here in the middle of the river. I don't know. All right, let's just stop here and make a cast. Ooh. God. All right, well, we ran up the river on Teleco, looked around a little bit, and uh, a lot of wood up here once you get way up this river, it seems like, and 
It makes it to where there's almost too much stuff in the water. Really, there's a lot of current. The only good thing about that is they're going to be positioned on eddies and places that are out of the current because there's just so much of it. I mean, I, I would assume this is probably not normal. I don't know. Now, when you don't have a lot of stuff in the water, you know, it, it makes it to where, you know, if you do find something that's unique, um, then it's going to concentrate all those fish. So for me, it might be one up here. I don't even know, but I just, you know, not, not looking like my favorite area necessarily. I spent two more days on Teleco and probably two more days on Loud and I feel like I've gotten a lot to look at. A lot. So ran down the river a little bit, just trying to, to get a bite, you know, just trying to determine what would be up in this area of the, of the lake. And the research that I've done just off of some of the tournaments that have been that time of year, it seems like smallmouth tend to play um, a little bit more than than largemouth, but also I've seen a 27 pound largemouth bag on 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 uh, online as well. So a lot of you know question and question mark. The big thing about the smallmouth though, it's an 18 size limit, and you know that's that's going to be really tough. I know I've, I've looked back looked back on some of the old FLW tournaments and some of the old PAA tournaments, and it seems like the guys that have targeted the smallmouth and at least weighed a couple of them in, there's some really, really big smallmouth in here. So, hence me spending a little bit more time on the main body. You know, if, you, if you're a smallmouth fisherman, you know most of the time, you know, a lot of those fish, they'll get in the backs of creeks, do not get me wrong, but main body are the biggest concentrations of them, lower end, upper ends of the lake, that's sort of where I try to target those fish. Nobody I'll ever run to Every time no one come through Take shots but I'm gun proof Know that I'm shooting right back Killing them when I be dropping the track Killing them and they be bringing it back Killing them so I be wearing all black Always been ready This ain't a game, no confetti I got my aim and I'm steady I'm gonna come back in here and look around real quick Just to see What it looks like A lot of bait Could be potentially like a large enough little area Like it's dumb how many crop here back in here if I can find a dock that has a little bit of water on it, it should be like dinged up. I don't want fame, I just want love. I don't want fame, I just want trust. Why they all trying to knock me down? They should all know I'ma stay up. I don't care about fame, don't care about chains, don't care about lame. I want them to know my name Only so they can hear all of my flames Said I'm insane But now they just see me on top I'm getting everything I wanted But the grind never gonna stop Cause I could lose it all tomorrow I don't care about the call tonight Let's see here Trip calculator We went 48 miles today 48 miles Ran around a little bit Trust this lake There's a lot of water We only covered uh, a very small percentage of it And uh, water seems to be a little dirtier on this side um, you know, overall, seen a few things, uh, eliminated some water that I didn't necessarily feel like I'm, you know, real confident in, um, but I got a lot of water to see. And, you know, this sort of gives you guys a little bit of a view of what, you know, what I do. I mean, it's, it's obviously, like I said, it's not glamorous at all, but going out here and working hard, putting your time in, prepping for an event, um, you know, knowledge is power. And, and, and where a basketball player goes out there and he shoots his free throws, and he's out there on his three-point line shooting all night long trying to be ready and get better, uh, same thing out here on the water. You're basically, this is our court, this is our basketball court, and we have to go out here and we have to prepare, we have to practice. Because at the end of the day, if you're not a uh, well-oiled machine and you're not out here and you're not doing it every day, then it's not gonna really help you a whole lot. So that's something that I, I try to, to stay on all the time. But, you know, this is a couple things that I, that I do day in and day out. Hopefully you guys have learned, uh, you know, a couple things from, from well, my pre-practice trip, but, um, you know, it's just gonna be a lot of elimination and really at the end of the day, you're gonna have to watch the practice video for the classic to see 
how it actually ends up. Cause anything is possible if you don't try that you'll never know. I don't want fame, I just want love. I don't want fame, I just want trust. Why they y'all trying to knock me down? They should all know I'ma stay up. And I wonder what it feels like.